In today's video, we're going to share with you how to install a bathtub, specifically the American Standard AmeriCast bathtub. We really, really like this option for small bathrooms, especially if you've got a tight space where the plumbing is a little bit tricky. So let's dive into the tips today. You're really going to like the video if you're doing a bathroom remodel. We think they could help you out with your project. Okay, so some of the preparation that we've done um, on top of using floor leveler to level out the base before putting in the tub. This will make your life a lot easier if uh, the if your subfloor is really on level like mine is. Uh, we basically have almost half an inch to five eighths of an inch off level in our main bathroom. So I wanted to make sure that the tub area was level. Um, so that was one of the some of the preparation we did the day before. Another, a couple other things you'll find in a lot of these old homes that the plaster, um, the plaster walls, most of the time are between five eighths, three quarter to seven eighths thick. It's usually really thick. It's a lot thicker than normal drywall. So what you'll end up when you end up tearing out that plaster, the opening for your tub will end up being larger than the tub size and. Uh, what you'll have to do is fur out the wall. Now what we did on this particular situation is that we were 61 and a quarter inches as an opening and we need a 60 inch opening for a tub. So we needed like an inch and a quarter of depth to make up the difference. So what I decided to do was just take out the entire plumbing wall, you know, where the sink um, basically just take out the entire wall and shim out the entire wall on one side of the bathroom. Now this is a very small bathroom. It's, it's five feet by five feet. So we're not talking a lot, like a lot of area, a lot of plaster that we tore out, but that's just going to make it a lot easier just to make a, all one, the wall, all one plane and then just drywall and hardy backer and it'll, it'll meet up nicely. So what we have here is three quarters of an inch and then we have quarter inch. Uh, plywood on top of that and I just bought sheets of plywood just ripped them down and just basically nailed them into the studs So right now we have a, a one inch filler on top of that So what we're gonna do is once we put it in the tub, we're actually gonna fur out the um, We're gonna use some shims to make up that difference an extra extra quarter inch that we need to make level and since we already have existing plaster on this side which is three quarters of an inch once we get that quarter inch shim and then the backer board, it'll be flush with this with this uh, plaster. A lot of tubs are gonna require this is to put a ledger board up against the wall. For this particular model, we need 13 and 5 eighths from, from our floor. So 13 and 5 eighths at the top of that board. I'm just gonna put two screws in it for now. So the tub that we're installing is the Princeton bath with integral overflow, uh, which is really awesome actually. But it's a little bit different than most tubs, whereas when you normally have an overflow assembly that you have to put together, this is only going to just have one drain piece that comes out. But what makes this a little bit different it is the actual overflow of this tub. So this is bumping out below. So this is actually going to be sitting resting below your floor a little bit. So you just have to make sure that you have a decent cutout for that to recess down in. It says on the instructions, I mean obviously what, what size of hole to make. But when I was dry fitting it I was able to see exactly where I needed. So it's, it's nothing pretty but it just cuts down below. So this is the drain assembly that it comes with. It's a, it's a twist and turn style. So when you want to, you know. You just twist it to turn it in so that you can fill up the tub and then it rests like that on a normal basis. Basically, it's it's a pretty simple drain. This is all it is. So I, I kind of like this idea that it's just literally a drain tailpiece that you're installing. It makes life a little bit easier. There's going to be less to go wrong with it. So we're going to use 100% silicone to apply to this drain tailpiece in here. Just make sure that it's 100% silicone and I'm going to be using clear but what I like to do is get a fair amount on the tub flange area itself 
and also go around the tailpiece. Now this is definitely gonna ooze out, but that's exactly what I want. I want a lot of this just to ooze out when I set it in place. So you can see how that's like bubbling out. You put your, your rubber washer on there first. And then your big metal ring. And then this guy. So on this guy, we're gonna use some pipe thread sealant. You don't ensure a good tight joint when we put this on there. Okay, so we're gonna go to hand tighten on this. And I have my little tool here for the inside of the tail thread piece. I just stick into the... So we get that the hand tight, and then we just go one half turn, or one half to one whole turn past that. You don't want to over tighten this. If you over tighten it, then you're gonna it's gonna create a problem. But it, so yeah, just one half turn to one full turn past hand tight. So one of the different things about this tub is that it's just the tailpiece and then you have to bring it over and tie it into your uh, your stack. Right now I just have this loosely fit here, but we're going to be using a P-trap to connect this. Now most tubs have that drain assembly that comes out and the over overflow comes out and then your tail your your connection is right about here. But right for right now this this integral drain um, sits right at the where the hole of the tub is which unfortunately for me it sits exactly right on these joists so what I want to do before I go installing the tub is to make it make it adapt to, to uh, ABS and then bring it out to a 45 so I can connect to my uh, my P trap use more of this pipe sealant now this is a you could get a tailpiece that threads inside of this pipe. I, if you put a tailpiece that threads in, it's going to even be further down, and I'm going to be further away from my my uh, my plumbing connection. And this is all going to be stuff that's going to be very very difficult to do if you install the tub first. So I definitely recommend at least getting this converted before you set the tub in, tub in place. So now that we got it converted to ABS, so we're basically going to just bring this straight out this way. Now we dry fit our tub. After our drain piece is in, you want to dry fit this tub before mortaring it down. This tub you can actually just install just like this. It's already level it, because I have that leveler that I already put the day before. So this tub is already sitting nice and level, which is great. I mean, it makes it so much easier having that having the the floor leveler on there it just makes everything so much easier to install this top because everything's level all the way around and and really it's it's a you know that base on here is is designed to be able to hold just to be able to sit on the level floor so you can opt out of not using the mortar underneath of this as a contractor as a professional i i really feel that setting this in some kind of mortar kind of makes it even more stable and it just kind of ensures that everything's not going to move. For all intents and purposes, you could install this, but you just want to make a double check when you have this dry fitted that your ledger board is tight to the top of this back ledger. Because what we're going to do before we install this is to put some silicone on top of this joist, on top of this ledger board, and seal this into place. So just make sure that that ledger board feels like it's in the same tightness all the way around, and it does on here. So. Uh, go ahead and pull this out. So we're just using it's just a standard uh, mortar mix. Uh, it could be a sand mix. It could really be any type of mortar. Um, there's really no specifications really for setting this tub. The only thing I like to do is just make sure I mix it fairly wet because I don't want it the mortar itself kind of holding the tub up from uh, hitting the floor. I just basically want this as a setting material for it. So 
make it kind of loose, don't make it too thick. And I really only need about a half a bag of this. Really just a mortar we're just sitting in the middle and I, I like to like to make this pourable like this um, now if you were using this to help level the floor then I'd say you're definitely going to need to make it thicker but this is really just to get into these waffles and just kind of hold it into place so I'm not really using this to like level the tub out since I already have the floor leveler done this is just to help kind of hold the tub into place so that's why I like to make it so thin for that. So once that sticks in there, they'll go into these waffles and just kind of grab into it. Uh, so you want to go ahead and on your ledger board too, is to apply a big bead of silic silicone on the edge here. You want to have that tub deck meet here and this will help adhere to the tub and make sure that there isn't any creaking or any movement. big bead there. I find it easiest to, to set this in kind of above chest tight so you're not leaning over trying to get this in and then just slide it down into place. that this mortar isn't holding this tub up in any way. Okay, so it's still sitting pretty level. Yeah, pretty good that way. So what I bought was some of these stainless steel washers. And uh, I'm going to just use some galvanized screws and just pinch that tub uh, to the stud. Because you really don't want to, first off, you'll be ruining a whole bunch of bits trying to drill through this porcelain coating. And secondly, um, the manufacturer recommendation is to use these big washers to, to tighten it to the, to the stud. See how it pinches out to the tub or to the stud. We have a little bit of a, a gap here from this bottom stud in the corner here. It's kind of a common problem that arises. And when we put the level on the wall, it shows that that stud is also a quarter inch off in plane with with the uh, with the studs so we're just going to use quarter inch plywood on here and then like i said we had quarter inch uh, that we needed to add on to this wall to make it even with the plaster that we have here i'm actually just going to use regular shims here because we have a little bit less than a quarter inch against these studs and then i'll put the quarter inch plywood against or the yeah the quarter inch plywood against the the studs here. So let me grab a piece of that. So you could just screw this into place if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use the next one. So this is less than a quarter inch spacing on the edge here. So I'm just gonna just use a regular wood shim. Break that off and then what we'll do is we're going to put this plywood here and then our backer board will be able to go straight down into the tub deck from there 
being less than a quarter inch works out pretty good since we're going to be using a quarter inch to get in order to get this to meet with our uh, plaster. So I was able to get a wash on this out of the tub, so I'm putting in another joist in, or another stud, I should say, just a scab. There, now I'm able to grab that. All right. It looks like it's just a, the bottom of the stud that actually is resting out. So I'm just going to shim this bottom of this. Basically all I want this to be able to do is to have that back report go straight to the tub without bringing it out and it looked like to me that it was actually just the bottom of the stud that was sinking in a little bit so I just shim this shim this out a little bit so then when I put the rest of these up they'll be all flush with the rest here Whenever it's possible to shim this out so that you can have this backer board go straight to the tub, I would say definitely do it. This is obviously an exterior wall, the back of the tub. So building this out is not going to be any big deal. This side we were able to shim out properly because the, the plaster is thicker than the backer board that we're having on there. So this was able to be shimmed out nicely. And on this wall, we can either put another layer of quarter inch over this entire wall on all the studs or just do the backer board to the top of the the, uh, the tub flange and then fill that gap. And I'm thinking at this point, that's what we're gonna do. For one, I'm running out of plywood, uh, but secondly, we've already kind of shrunk this as much as, um, I mean, it's already a small bathroom. Not, not that a quarter inch is a big deal, but you, you basically have two, two plans here. Either add another layer, a quarter inch, or, just fill in that tub, the, the gap between uh, the board. And I think that's what we're gonna do on this one. But we're gonna go ahead and install the faucet next and then, then the backer board. As you saw, installing the AmeriCast bathtub by American Standard is pretty straightforward. And the nice thing is the integral waste pipe in it because that way you don't have another leak point that could create a water problem in your bathroom. So if you like today's video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also remember that we've got a great course called how to remodel a tub shower combo like this tub shower setup right here. And you can check out that course right there by clicking right here, I should say. And the nice thing is we show you how to install a bathtub, put in all the plumbing, put in the waterproofing, and then tile and grout it. And this is a project you can definitely do yourself within seven to 10 days, and we'll show you how to do it. All right, that's it. Again, thanks so much for watching today's video. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.